Today, we're going to talk about the controversy surrounding whether or not Pluto is a planet, and just talk about how we discovered all the planets. For ancient astronomers, there were five known planets. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Then we discovered that Earth is a planet. Thanks, Copernicus. In 1781, William Herschel discovered a new planet, which he named after King George III. Now, at the time, George was busy dealing with some angry Americans. And George was not popular. No one else wanted to name it after him, so they named it Uranus. In 1801, Giuseppe Piazzi discovered a new object that looked like a planet. He wanted to name it after the King of Sicily, but no one else did, so they named it Ceres. But then they discovered more objects that were close to Ceres, Palazzo, Juno, and Vesta. At first, they kept adding these new objects to the list of known planets, but then they kept discovering more of them. The list of planets got way too long, and these newcomers found themselves demoted from planet to asteroid. Astronomers had also been keeping an eye on Uranus, and they discovered that it was not moving the way they expected it to. It was as if some other object was pulling it away from where it was supposed to be. John Couch Adams calculated where such an object would be, and he asked James Chalice to look for it. And James thought it was a waste of time. But in France, Le Verrier had the same idea, and he asked Johann Galli to look for it. And Galli found the planet Neptune right where Le Verrier said it would be. In Flagstaff, Arizona, in 1930, Clyde Tombaugh took these two photographs. He found within them a moving object that was moving like a planet. 11-year-old Venetia Burney thought it should be named Pluto, and the name stuck. Pluto was classified as a planet for a long time, but it didn't really fit in with the other planets. First, it's very small. It's smaller than our moon, and smaller than several moons of Jupiter and Saturn. And its orbit is weird. If we look at the orbits of the planets, and we make them all the same size, we see that the orbits are almost perfect circles, except for Pluto. And these orbits lie nearly flat on a single plane, except for Pluto, which is sticking up at a weird angle. But Pluto was safe until about 2002, when Mike Brown and his team started discovering other large objects past Neptune. They discovered Eris, which is heavier than Pluto. Astronomers suddenly had a lot more objects to worry about, and they didn't know what to call them. Are these planets? Are they something else? The problem was that astronomers didn't have a clear definition of the word planet. A planet was just a big object that orbits the sun. But how big is big enough? Small objects have odd, irregular shapes. But as an object gets bigger, its gravity grows stronger. At some point, gravity is strong enough that it compresses the object into a round shape. So planets are round. Another thing large planets do is they clear everything out of their way. Any nearby object is going to either get pulled into the planet or thrown out of the way. In 2006, the IAU defined a planet to be a round object that orbits the sun and has cleared its neighborhood. They see that round objects orbiting the sun that have not cleared their neighborhood should be called dwarf planets. Now, Pluto has not cleared its neighborhood. There are plenty of large objects out there. So they say that Pluto is not a planet, it's a dwarf planet. And remember Ceres? It just got promoted from asteroid to dwarf planet. The state of New Mexico responded by saying that Pluto was a planet in their state. So, is the IAU correct? Is Pluto a planet or not? Now, normally I don't think we should use committees to settle scientific debates. But this is not a scientific debate. It's a debate over the meaning of the word planet. There's no experiment we could do to discover the meaning of this word. And it's important that we have good, clear definitions. Think of it this way. Which side of the road is the best side of the road for driving? Is it the right side or the left side? Now, 
Either side is perfectly fine. We just all need to pick a side. And either definition of the word planet's fine. We just need to agree on it. So I'm inclined to respect the IAU's decision, except there's one part of it that just doesn't make any sense. They say that a dwarf planet is not a planet. That's just dumb. If I was in charge, we'd have two types of planets. We would have dwarf planets, and we'd have full planets, and they'd all be planets. And scientists continue to discover new planets, not around our sun, but around other stars. When a planet orbits a star, it causes the star to move. The star wobbles in a circle. This motion changes the color of the star through the Doppler shift. By measuring a color change, we can detect planets around other stars. Planets can also pass in front of a star, blocking some of the light. So we can also detect planets by measuring a change in brightness. These two methods have been used to detect thousands of planets far beyond our solar system. For more astronomical videos, please click to subscribe.